When you're judging a shot, what's the first thing you look for? Is it balance, leading lines, old and ratio, color, light, shapes? I think these are all essential and they're all part of good images. But there's one thing I always notice first. Movement. Kurosawa film moves like no one else's. Each one is a masterclass in different types of motion and also ways to combine them. Over a career spanning half a century, he made 30 films. And in all of them, the movement is surprising and cinematic. What types of movement did he like? First, there's the movement of nature. In every one of his films, the background of the shot features some kind of weather. Wind, water, fire, smoke, snow. One advantage of this approach is that shots have a lot of visual interest. Even when people are still, there's that rain in the background to draw your eye. Second is the movement of groups. Kurosawa films usually feature large groups of people who either band together or split apart. Crowds like this are really cinematic. When you put this many people in a shot, any emotion feels big. If you want a good reaction shot, try using four people or 25. And if you want something really big, Which brings us to number three, the movement of individuals. One of my favorite things about Kurosawa is that his blocking is unrealistic and exaggerated. If someone is nervous, they pace left and right. If they're outraged, they stand straight up. And if they're ashamed, he would often tell his actors to pick one gesture for their character and repeat it throughout the film. That way, the audience can quickly see who's who and how they're feeling. Number 4, Movement of the Camera. One of the hallmarks of Kurosawa's style are his fluid camera moves. That go from a close-up, to a full shot, to an over-the-shoulder, in a single unbroken take. But what's important here is that every camera move has a clear beginning, middle and end just by itself this move tells a story and last there's movement of the cut Corsal is one of the few directors who work as his own editor one of the reasons his movies just flow is that he tends to cut on movement often you're paying so much attention to someone who's moving that you don't see the edit when he finishes a scene he switches the rhythm usually by ending on something static and then cutting straight into movement. By switching up the rhythm, he keeps you on your toes because you can't guess the next cut. So with all that, let's break down one scene and study the motion. This scene comes from Seven Samurai. I'm not gonna tell you what it's about. See how long it takes you to figure it out. Ready? The first shot shows the whole village, then just the important characters, then just the samurai. Right about here. Most people get what's happening. As Kikuchio sits down, his action ripples outwards to affect the whole village. Notice how much the wind adds to the scene. Even when people are still, there's that little bit of wind to spice up the frame. So that's pretty straightforward. Now, let's jump 60 years into the future. This is the Avengers. Here, we start with a camera move into an establishing shot. But this time, we get dialogue right away. 
Throughout this scene, the only things that move are the camera and Nick Fury. Even though we have weather outside and actors in the background, none of them are used. Notice that the camera movement doesn't have a beginning or an end, and there's no variation. Each shot goes in the exact same direction. But in Seven Samurai, the camera moves have a distinct beginning, middle, and end. And each shot changes the direction from the previous one. As he climbs up, Kurosawa uses the movement of the flag to cut smoothly into this angle. All seven samurai and their banner together. The scene has every type of movement carefully pieced together and spaced throughout. The weather, the group, the individual, the camera, the cut. But this scene tells its story mostly through dialogue. Sure, the camera moves, but it's pointless movement. For all the money that was put into it, this scene feels flat. But how could you improve a scene like this? Well, if you know what the scene's about, try to express it through movement. Start with the character, how are they feeling? Is there any way the actor can convey that I'm moving? Take the feeling that's inside the character and bring it out through the background. If the character is angry and menacing, you can do this. Or is she simmering with resentment? Another option is to contrast one person against the group. So if somebody suffers a very public humiliation, this works. Or if they're looking for a needle in a haystack. You can use camera movement to convey excitement. You can cut on movement to show surprise. And you can combine every type of motion into one amazing image. By the way, you don't need to put every type of movement in every shot. But there's a nice middle ground with lots of variation and subtlety. If you combine the right motion and the right emotion, you get something cinematic. Now pick any of his films, go to any scene, and watch how everything moves together.